again. Thank you very much, Marin. And you'll be hearing more from Marin King later in our program. Welcome to Circle Sanctuary's Flower Lore Full Moon Circle. I'm Reverend Judith of Circle Sanctuary, and I'll be your guide as we celebrate this May full moon and total, total lunar eclipse, which will be visible across the continental US later tonight. This flower form moon is ripe with possibilities and budding with transformative growth. But we have to remember that some flowers have thorns. We may have to face the truth of what is lurking in the shadows so that we can bring it into the light. Purging our emotional baggage makes room for growth. So we are being asked to free face our feelings and acknowledge that which no longer serves us. This full moon energy then also helps us to ground and prepare for what is to come next in our lives. May you blossom and bloom with this lunar eclipse full moon. We're delighted that you're joining us here now live or if you're watching us later. It is now my honor and pleasure to introduce our high priestess and senior minister, Reverend Selena Fox. Bright blessings of the full moon. This month, it is a full moon, a super moon, a flower lore moon, and a blood moon, because when you have a total lunar eclipse, the moon looks reddish uh, at the point of totality. And we will be doing a prepare for the eclipse working as part of our time tonight. For those of you who want to know more about the actual timing of the eclipse part, it starts becoming visible at 9.27 p.m. Central Time. The total phase of eclipse starts at 10.29 p.m. Central Time. It peaks at 11.11 p.m. Central Daylight Time. So <clears throat> wherever you are, uh, those of you joining us live, I invite you to take a look outside if the sky is clear um, later tonight or go to one of the astronomy websites such as space.com where you can watch the live stream. So let us attune to the flower lore full moon. Let us attune to the flower lore full moon. Let us attune to the flower lore, full moon, so be it. Thank you, Selena. Nikki, would you please give our Circle Sanctuary announcements? Hi, everybody. Welcome to our May flower lore, full moon circle. Thank you all so much for being here tonight. Um, okay, so we have a few announcements for the evening. Um, just remember, you can always check the Circle Sanctuary website at www.circlesanctuary.org for more information. Um, first of all, next month's full moon circle theme is sacred crystals and stones. And that will be taking place on Monday, June 13th at 7 p.m. Um, throughout the month of May, Circle Sanctuary salutes National Military Appreciation Month, as well as Armed Forces Day, this coming Saturday, May 21st. Um, Circle's Welcome Summer Festival will be taking place on Saturday, June 11th. Uh, volunteers will be needed at the sanctuary. Please let us know if you can help us out. Uh, we are thrilled to be meeting in person again for our Pagan Spirit Gathering from June 19th through the 26th at a new location. Uh, this year we will be at Fort, Letter Fort Leonard Wood Shrine Camp near Waynesville, Missouri. Um, please register on Circle's website by June 3rd for our Here Comes the Sun Homecoming PSG 2022. Um, and join us throughout the week for our Circle Sanctuary Network podcasts. For various topics and speakers, see our CSNP Facebook page or Circle's website. <clears throat> there will be a community volunteer day at Circle Sanctuary Nature Preserve in Wisconsin on Saturday, May 21st. Uh, those interested in taking part should email um, circle at circlesanctuary.org. Um, 
And just another reminder that Circle's 2022 calendars are still available in the resource shop online. Shows all the moon phases and festival dates for the year. Um, and uh, memberships and donations are really important for the upkeep of our nature preserve. So please check out your opportunities to contribute at Circle's website. Thank you. Thank you, Nikki. Selena will now cast our circle. I invite you wherever you may be to connect with a sacred circle for this full moon night, a sacred circle of flowers. Flowering of the ground, sacred earth, we call to you, bless and renew our bodies. Flowering of the vines, sacred air, we call to you, bless and renew our minds. Flowering of the branches, sacred fire, we call to you, bless and renew our vitality. Flowering of the marsh, sacred water, we call to you, bless and renew our emotions. Flowering of the moon, sacred spirit, we call to you, bless and renew our souls. So be it. Richard, would you now light our moon fire, please? I light this candle to represent the burning fire that is at the heart of many pagan rites. As spring unfolds in the Northern Hemisphere, many of these rites involve flowers. I pay homage to the fresh spring flowers, so mote it be. I now invite all of our presenters to light their candles. In celebration of this flower lore full moon, thank you all for being here this evening, whether you're here on our presenters panel or whether you're watching us now live or later. Hail and welcome. I now call upon Selena to give out flower lore blessings and chant. Let us spend a few moments calling to mind a favorite flower. It might be a flower that you have nearby or that you see nearby, or it may be a memory of a particular flower. I invite you to call it to mind. And as you do, experience yourself being a kind of flower. Resonating with this flower, experience yourself blooming. One of the powerful things for flower lore is the idea of blooming in nature can aid us in ourselves blooming, growing in new ways, being creative. Let us bloom with flower lore full moon. Let us bloom with flower lore full moon. Let us bloom with flower lore full moon. So be it, and we give thanks to the flowers in our lives and in our environment. Blessed be. I now call upon Robin. She's gonna tell us about the delights of the moon garden at full moon time. 
So the poem I'm going to read captures a moon garden at one moment in time, some of which for me in Wisconsin and probably some of you is yet to come. But for others, you, spring have, may have already fully arrived. Wherever you are, I invite you to close your eyes and imagine sitting in this full moon garden tonight. Delights of the full moon garden at full moon time. When twilight falls and then darkness comes, the vibrant colors of spring blooms fade to shades of gray. As the moon rises full tonight, tarry in the garden, be still. The moon will enchant you with its artistry. The evening bird songs fade, the crickets or spring peepers take up the chorus. The garden transforms. As the moonlight bathes white and silver plants, so they glow in its light. Fireflies rise from the foliage. The garden has a slower pace now, yet all is not still. As you gaze at the flowers, you see some of them seem to fly as moths search for nectar. And you hear the low hum of bees frequenting night blooms. Breathe deeply, indulge in the sweet scents of these night flowers that beckon the insects. Be immersed in the fragrances that surround you. Of evening primrose, four o'clocks, moonflower, night blooming jasmine and Japanese wisteria. Over by a small pond that reflects the moon, someone stands, arms raised and says, full moon illuminating this garden, heightening our senses, bathing us in calmness and beauty. We delight in this time of rejuvenation, of quiet celebration, of challenges met or goals achieved since we last met with you in April. We are grateful for your presence in our lives that is both constant and changing and teaches us the power and wisdom in embracing both. Thank you and blessed be. Thank you, Robin, that was lovely. And I now call upon Nikki to tell us about Columbines. So tonight I'm gonna to be reading a poem called Columbines. Um, it was written by Teresa Hooley. Um, it's a short little poem, but I think you'll all enjoy it. Airily poised in the garden bed, delicate saffron, white and rose, with gossamer petals lightly spread, the columbines flutter upon their toes. Wait till the moonlight sets them free. They'll stir, they'll shake off the dew. They'll go dancing, dancing, but you'll not see. You'll be too busy asleep to know. Someone surprised them once in May, glimmering ivory, gold, and pink, dancing under the moon. That way, columbines found their name, I think. Thank you. Thank you, Nikki. That was a sweet one. I now call on our, our uh, guest musician, Marion King, to sing her song called Flower of the Moon, which she wrote. And um, there you go. <laughs> Thanks so much, Judith. My favorite flower is the morning glory in all of its beautiful colors. But I found a flower last year that is a night blooming morning glory. And it's called Ipomea Alba. And I've written a song about her called Flower of the Moon. Come take a walk with me through our mother's sake. Born to win 
so much, Marin. Beautiful song. Jennifer is now going to present um, Blossom Bells. Oh, there I am. 
Um, hello, everyone near and far. I'm coming to you from Oconomowoc, Wisconsin, uh, ancestral home of the Potawatomi people, and prior to them, the Mound Builders. I have a little reading for you today, but a wee story before I get there. Um, this begins with this skein of yarn. Um, I'm a knitter. I bought this yarn, and when um, independent dyers create a color pattern, they usually name it. And the name of this yarn was Ring the Blossom Bell. Now, I have to tell you this. As soon as I heard those words, I thought, no one in the 21st century wrote that. That, that this had a this had a kind of a fanciful whimsical twee sense to it that it, it drove me crazy because I was like oh, I, I I just know that that it didn't come from now it came from before and um, long story short I talked to some people I finally googled it and I found out that this was a children's song written in 1903 by a woman named Kate Ulmer who was a songwriter and a hymnist and what I love about this reading. It's a song, but I don't sing, so I'm going to read it to you, is that it immediately brought back to me 1965, walking to the bus stop, feeling the warm air on my legs because we had to wear dresses to public school, and also smelling all the amazing lilacs between my house and the bus stop. And it, it's just like it was yesterday. It's so clear to me. So it's, a, it's, it's sweet. It's childlike. But it gave me that impression immediately, and I'm happy to share it with you. It's called Blossom Bell. Over the hill and valley ring the blossom bells. On the breeze is wafted, how their gladness swells. Summer days have come at last, their ringing tells. Ring, oh ring, be blossom bells. Swinging, softly swinging in the sunlight air. How their cheerful chiming echoes everywhere. Welcome is the message which to us comes they bear. Ring, oh ring, be blossom bells. Blossom bells, ring, oh ring. Join the chorus with the birds that sing. Let your chimes sweetly tell of the joy that fills each blossom bell. R winter's bloom now is past. Blossom bells, ring your praise. Oh, oh, how this happy day of days. And I owe it to the yarn. Thank you, Jennifer. So you mentioned lilacs um, and lilacs have one of the earliest bloom times. They symbolize spring and renewal and they have a deep rooted history originating in ancient Greek mythology. It was said that Pan, the god of forests and fields was hopelessly in love with a beautiful wood nymph named Syringa. One day he was pursuing her through a forest and afraid of his advances, she turned herself into a lilac shrub to disguise herself. To Pan's surprise, he could not find Syringa, but he did find the shrub. Because a lilac shrub consists of hollow reeds, he cut the reeds and created the first Pan pipe, and it never left his side after that. So ultimately, Pan did capture Syringa. The Celts regarded the lilac as magical due to their incredibly intoxicating fragrance. During the Victorian age, the giving of a lilac was meant to be a reminder of an old love. In fact, widows were often seen wearing lilacs during this period. In Eurasia, it was thought that holding a sprig of lilac over a newborn would bring them wisdom. In the United States, the lilac is the official state flower of New Hampshire and represents the hearty nature of those people. And I, living in the Midwest, am blessed with a row of now beautifully blooming lilac bushes just outside my window. So Sean Thomas is now going to talk to us about roses. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> this poem is called a Rose by Rosa Vertner Jeffrey. A rose I call for thee, one royal flower, blooming alone in regal pride apart, summer's last breath and her last golden hour, nestled together in its crimson heart, one moment to its leaves my lips are pressed. Thou'lt find the kiss because it comes from me, one moment has blushed upon my breast, and bears from thence a freight of love to thee. And where the pressure of my warm lip glows, thrilling the blossom with a human bliss, 
a tear is gleaming too, because the rose that comes from me cannot return thy kiss. Hard iron miles now hold our lives apart. Long leaves, long leagues of ocean waves between us moan. Go, Rose, crowned with my love, and to a heart thou'lt find as mine is left alone, alone. And when it comes to thee, all cold and crushed, the color dying on its crimson crest, where'er the faded leaves are deepest flushed, well wilt thou know that there my lips were pressed, and inward where the golden petals shine, if lingers yet the incense of its breath, thou'lt say perchance that one sad tear of mine embalm the sweetness of the rose in death. Oh, linger not too long beyond the sea, for absence is a bitter chilling frost. Ere roses bloom again, return to me, forever absent is forever lost. A spray of cypress shades this crimson flower, flushed by its passing blush, its lasting breath. The rose, to tell thee of love's living power, the cypress, that my love is unto death. Thank you. Thank you, Sean Thomas. Jennifer now has some um, flowering almond for us. Hello, everyone. This is my flowering almond. And it has been a very unusually dry and cold spring here in South Central Wisconsin. My lilacs are not out yet. My lilies of the valley are not out yet but I can always count on my flowering almond. Um, every year, even if nothing else comes out, the flowering almond is my champion. Um, I planted it the first year we bought this house. It didn't bloom for 10 years, but now it's, it's ever faithful and it's always my first um, blossom of the spring. Beautiful, thank you, Jennifer. Dree, would you like to um, now join us with your presentation? Hi, thank you, Judith. I've been really enjoying everybody's sharing tonight. It's such a beautiful moon this, this month. This is my old faithful tree, my blossoming tree. These are a pink dogwood. This is currently in bloom in my front yard. And um, I wanted to share that to tag on to Jennifer's, but mostly I wanted to talk to you about helichrysum. Um, of those of you that might know, I work a lot with essential oils as an aromatherapist and particularly in spiritual ways and magical ways. And I have some here. I don't know if you can see the color, but it's kind of yellowish, little, uh, a little reddish. And I'm going to describe the aroma to you. The aroma of helichrysum to me smells a little bit like licorice. There's um, a little bit of a medicinal aroma. It smells deep and floral in a grounded way, not in a really kind of um, high note type of way. It smells a little bit like um, uh, rosemary or mint, that kind of herbaceous aspect is in there as well. It's a lovely, maybe not commonly used essential oil, um, but I was wanting to recommend it tonight because we have the lunar eclipse. And um, helichrysum is uh, beautiful for eclipse moons because the foliage of the helichrysum plant, it's a, kind of a shrub, um, the foliage is like a silvery green. So this um, magically can be interpreted um, and seen as um, reverent to the moon. And then it blooms these round, bright gold, yellow flowers within it. And that has um, associations with the sun, of course. Even its name, Helichrysum um, in ancient Greek, comes from like uh, gold or sun, sun gold, basically. Um, so what I would recommend on a day like today is a self massage, or if you want, you could trade massages with somebody by taking, uh, maybe four or five drops of this with a teaspoon of, um, base oil here. I have, an uh, olive oil that I charge under the moon. So you could add that to it, or here I have, a. Uh, 
sunflower oil, you could also use that. Um, and as you're doing the massage, remember that in this moment, the planet Earth is in between the sun and the moon. When we go into a lunar eclipse, we're, we're being held by our God and goddess. What a beautiful thing to imagine. The support and resilience, the restoration that comes from that kind of energy is really pulled out in the helichrysum oil and using it in a massage helps us to dislodge things that we no longer need that we've been storing in our bodies. Often um, we carry emotions, but also toxins that we want to get rid of. So I invite you to try it out. And if you don't have any, contact your local aromatherapist and maybe you could buy a few drops from them. Thank you. Thank you, Tree. I really learned something. That's always wonderful. Selena now has a blood moon eclipse healing for us. continuing to look at flowers, the moon, and the eclipse. Well, one of the real powerful things about having a total lunar eclipse during a flowering moon, you basically are able to not only connect with the cycle of the moon, in different phases, but with flowers, different parts of the world, flowers come on in different times and different stages. And so flowers can teach us a lot about our lives and ways of being, the sacred circles of nature. They begin to bloom, they get very large in some cases, or they might be tiny and bloom out. And when the blooming is done, there often is a big surge of energy with the plant. Sometimes the flowers actually are part of what needs to happen for fruit to form. And then the fruit turns, once you pick the fruit and some of the fruits go back to nature and then seeds come out. So one of the things to keep in mind for a lunar eclipse, especially a total lunar eclipse, is you're actually going through all the phases of the moon in a short period of time. And there are different approaches to working in sacred ways at um, the full moon time. And what I'd like to share with you is something that I have found really helpful in preparing for the lunar eclipse to actually find some time to do some reflection of what's happening within yourself, within your communities that you're part of, within the world, and what are some things you want to dispel, release. And Dre talked about massage being a way with some sacred oil to help with that process of letting go. And as each of us have shared from different perspectives about flowers, well, this is a time to bloom with the moon and to do some transformation. So I am going to invite you wherever you might be, if you have a little notebook or a way to make some notes, Spend a few moments as I shake my sistrum. And what are some things that you want to dispel from your life, dispel from the world? And why set them down in writing? You don't have to, but it's a way that you can focus your attention and you may want to even take whatever you've written it on. And as you do a working to actually crumple it up or rip it apart and let it go symbolically. 
tonight what I'm going to do for the working is to work with my moon globe as a symbol of the moon. And right now we know that the moon is very bright. It's a super moon because the moon is much closer to the earth and during super moon time. So it looks even a bit bigger, which is really fabulous. And I invite you as I conceal the moon, thinking about those things that you have called to mind that you wish to dispel. And now in the next few moments, I'm going to invite you to send those things, imagine them dissolving away just as the moon starts disappearing. And I invite you to also join me in some particular workings as we connect on this lunar eclipse night. The pandemic in the United States has reached 1 million deaths this month. And let us dispel that virus from this life in this world as I ring this bell, let us send away the virus and the concerns and the grief and the loss and all the horrible things connected with this. Pandemic be gone. Pandemic be gone. Pandemic be gone. And now I invite you to join me in dispelling gun violence, to join with many people, not only in the US, but around the world, seeking to get rid of racism and dispelling those who really have things in how they connect with others that are unhelpful. So during this eclipse, let us dispel bigotry, hatred, racism, sexism, those isms where people are othered and not treated equally, and also dispelling the misinformation that so often fuels bigotry. We send this away. And of course, there is a need to let go, dispel repressive regimes. What is happening in Ukraine is horrible. And let us join with so many others to really work for peace and to dispel the invasion, the oppression, the killing, the bombing, all these things connected with this war in Ukraine. So many people of many backgrounds in many places are being impacted in a horrible way. So let there be peace and freedom, self-determination for Ukraine and let us dispel things and processes that are interfering with that. And 
a final thing for us to work on together before we start getting our moon bright again and doing some healing. Planet Earth has climate change happening and a lot of people and creatures and plants, including flowers and ecosystems are being adversely affected by that. Let us find ways to dispel the climate change and dispel misinformation about our environment and the interconnectedness we all have. Let us send away the terrible impacts of humans being addicted to fossil fuel and other things that are contributing to this problem. So let's remove the barriers to change climate change for a healthier planet. So be it. And now the moon is going to start brightening again here symbolically. And as this happens, call to mind the power of blooming, call to mind resilience, call to mind renewal, as Chris the Bard will play some music for us. What do you want to bloom in your life coming out of this lunar eclipse? What do you want to bloom? How do you want to grow? Hold that in your mind. And we also send forth prayers for the things that we have dispelled um, to let something different and better to emerge as the negativity and the dysfunction is dissolved. Thank you, Chris. And I have sunflowers not only representing Ukraine and its needs, but the sunshine of the warmer months, the summertime. And may we shine like the bright moon and the bright sun. May we find healthier ways to be healing, renewal, support for those impacted by the pandemic, healing and support to those impacted by gun violence and by racism, sexism, otherism, things that have created so many problems. Let us send healing, love and support. Let us connect more fully together even if we have very different viewpoints and find good ways of being in harmony with each other. And let us join together for a more peaceful world and a world where each person has self-determination in their lives and on their bodies and with their bodies. So we send forth blessings, empowerment, joy and hope and for planet earth let us send forth well wishes to the planet that is our home peace love well-being healing for planet earth so be it Blessings, Selena. Thank you so much. 
Give thanks for the blessings. Give thanks for the lessons. Give thanks for all that the goddess provides. Give thanks for this showing. The flowers are now growing. Give thanks for the presence of the goddess in our lives. Thank you, thank you. Oh, great mother, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Oh, great mother, thank you. As flowers are growing tall, our garden soon feeding all, we asked for the new growth to blossom and bloom. Give thanks for the blessings, give thanks for the lessons, give thanks for all that the goddess provides. Thank you, thank you, oh great mother, thank you. Thank you, thank you, oh great mother, thank you. Selena, I now call upon you to release our circle. We cast a circle of blooms around us at the start of our gathering. Let us take one or more of those blooms into ourselves, into our lives, to remind us about the power of hope, of love, of connection, of resilience, of creativity to aid us in blooming. And we call on the sacred elements. We call on the flowering of the ground, sacred earth, and we give thanks. We call on the flowering of the vine, sacred air. We give thanks. We call on the flowering of the branches, sacred fire. We give thanks. We call on the flowering of the marsh, sacred water. We give thanks. We call on the flowering of the moon, sacred spirit. We give thanks. We call on the spirit of flowers as a great garden, as a wild field of many blooms. We call on the flowers that are within each of us. And we've honored here tonight, spirit of the flowers, spirits of fields and meadows and gardens. We give thanks. We give thanks. We give thanks. Thank you, Selena. I now call upon all of the presenters here to raise your flowers or raise your candles. And um, thank you for joining us for this flower, flower lore full moon circle. May the circle of life protect you. May the branches of life hold you. May the roots of life encourage you with no beginning and no end. The circle of life is never broken. As above, so below, as within, so without, blessed be. Thank you for joining us this evening or for watching later. Join us again next month on Monday, June 13th for our sacred crystals and stones full moon circle. Merry meet, merry part, and merry meet again. Chris, would you now please tell us about circle membership and donations? So good evening, everybody. Tonight has been brought to you by a bunch of wonderful volunteers and volunteers make up a lot of what Circle does. And yet there's a point where you can volunteer too. You can make a donation or become a member of Circle Sanctuary. On the screen, you should be seeing the um, website to go visit www.circlesanctuary.org your memberships and your donations keep the lights on at the sanctuary, pays for the bills to maintain water and all the other things that are necessary on the site and on the land itself. So join us, become a member today. Thank you, Chris. We'll, no cl we'll now close out with um, Marin's beautiful guitar playing. Mm -hmm.